Do you know what I like to do on opening day? I like to look at some baseball cards. All right, guys, I am back from the Tampa Card Show. I went this past weekend and hung out with Lou and George, Concrete Buddy. Lou Rock and I and our wives went to my favorite restaurant, Burns Steakhouse, and had a wonderful dinner. Even though we could only get reservations at uh, 9.30 on a, on a Sunday night, but they... Uh, uh, they brought us in an hour, so that was nice. Uh, but uh, the card show was uh, was a good time, as always. Thought I'd show you some of the pickups I have and uh, some other random things, some other pickups, a few random things that uh, I'm just going to show you. I pulled out from my uh, sorting, and I've been cleaning, um, and I'm making great progress this time. So I'm excited about that. And I picked up something really cool I want to show you. Uh, before that, though, I got a special gift in the mail. Eric Mules, he sent me a care package. And uh, he sent uh, these box toppers he said he pulled from Topps Heritage. And they're pretty cool. They're the stamped, the original Topps cards that are stamped. So you got me those Pirates rookies. Bob Johnson. And I actually don't think I have this card. And Tommy Sisk. And an Eddie Watt. I'm sure I know why he sent that. Eric, thank you so much. I appreciate it. The Eddie Watt Project. I love looking at old cards. Just love looking at old baseball cards. Don't you? It's more fun than the latest drama, or what to invest in, or if sports cards are going up in price. <laughs> All right. I've been a little frustrated lately watching YouTube. I saw this one video, and it was the top 10 mistakes to avoid when sending your cards in to PSA for grading. And the number two most important one was don't send damaged cards in. <laughs> these are our YouTube experts these days. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so uh, the really cool item I got in. I got this. This is from 1953. And it's a copy of the American Card catalog where it all began where we get our t206 t205 all those good numbers and this is you know this is cataloged by uh jeffrey uh Je jefferson burdick and uh, there 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 aren't a lot of pictures this thing was um let's see here two dollars And he cataloged all these these cards, but they're not a lot of pictures. It's mostly uh, checklists. Uh, many of you may remember the old sports card Bible back in the day, and it was similar. It was just a checklist. They didn't they didn't have any pictures in. I remember when I bought it as a kid, I was so disappointed there were no baseball cards to look at. It was just a bunch of checklists, and I still remember uh, on the cover of mine was a 1965 Roberto Clemente. I don't know if any of you remember that old that old book. I don't know whatever happened to it. I somehow lost that thing. I'd like to get another copy. But there, there are a few pictures on here. And uh, he catalogs all cards, not just baseball. So, kind of a cool piece of card history to have. And inside it was a flyer uh, where you, promoting it. And telling you to send in and send your two dollars uh, to buy one of these things really really cool I didn't even know this was in there when I got it but man this paper I want to tell you something it smells so old it smells like the 280 attic finds I've heard about in the last month 
Every day I hear about a new attic find. It's like people didn't know cards were worth money for, for the last 40 years. All right, what did I get at the show? Let's see here. First, I got this, and I already have a couple. But the color on this thing was so vibrant. And I tried to get Lou Rock to buy it, and he, he was he was dilly-dallying around. So um, he gave me a number that he would pay for it, and this guy gave me a number lower than that, so I bought it. I don't know, Lou. I don't know why you didn't want it. But the color on this thing is so vibrant. Most are not this colorful. 1966 Clemente. So I had to get it. And my man, George Blanda, this is a real sharp 63 Fleer. Fantastic card. And I've been picking up a few of these lately. Um, I didn't have a lot of them. So uh, I got this 1960 All-Star Ernie Banks. It's fitting I show him on opening day. Let's play two. Hard not to like Ernie Banks. Mr. Cub. Grab this uh, Earl Campbell autograph card. It's a reprint of his rookie. But he's, you know, he's kind of fallen into obscurity with a lot of the other old NFL greats. And you don't have to pay a lot of money for his stuff. And I kind of wanted this and I kind of forgot about looking for it. Um, so I grabbed it. It's, it's an eight. So who the hell wants an eight? It's cheap. Ray Lewis rookie. Number collectors definitely wouldn't want that one. And I got a Dick Schofield 1970 autograph card. Dicky Schofield, they called him Ducky. Believe he is Jason Worth's grandfather. And I got this Phil Esposito, fantastic. Seventy-three. It's a tough set. I love that set. And I got this Peter Stastny. Statney? Stas, Stas, Stasny? His name is a tongue twister. I don't show a lot of hockey cards because, quite frankly, I can't pronounce a lot of their names. <laughs> and I got this... Uh, Sir, uh, Dennis Savard. Almost said Sergey. These Opeachy cards. This is a great set. Love that set. Love the uh, Wayne Gretzky from this set. It's his third year. And I got this for literally $3. And it had a nice $3 price tag. So um, I put all my cards away when I came back from the show and I just had this in my pocket to show my wife so that she could see that it was three dollars but I took it off now but it's a squirt Dave Parker 1981 and it has the same back as the 1981 tops and I picked up uh, two 1962 cards uh, Tommy Davis and Tommy Davis led the league in um, uh, batting average uh, in 62 and again in 63. And I think he led in RBIs in 62 as well. 62 was probably his best season. But a solid player. I think he had a lifetime batting average of 294, if I'm not mistaken. So, 62, the year, one of the years. He led the league in batting, and I got a Don Larson. I may have both of these, but these were really sharp. 
62 is tough to find sharp. And my man Lou Rock uh, had picked these up for me. I think he might have wanted them for himself, but he felt guilty and gave them to me. Uh, so I had to rescind the favor. Return the favor. Rescind? Return the favor. Rescind? <laughs> Jack Sawinski. Brian Reynolds refractor. And a Kutch. All right, I picked up. Man, this is, this card just, uh, this card is nostalgic to me. Such a great card. And that is the Willie McGee rookie card from 1983 Tops. Uh, but this is the Opeachy. Just a classic card. Love that card. And I got this really cool Michael Jordan. Another one I got recently. Showed this on a previous video. Kind of similar. This is a really cool card. I got a Jerry Rice police card from 88. These police cards are so undervalued. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess people don't want them, but uh, they're really cool. I You could get these for next to nothing. George Concrete Buddy uh, at the Tampa show uh, picked up a Roger Staubach. I, I think it was a few bucks. Um, and some of these police issues are from their rookie season. So, you know, I consider them rookie cards. But I know others may not. I got this Ken Singleton. This is a 1974 Kellogg's. I've been showing a few of his cards lately. He was good when I was watching baseball. Got this 1953 Smokey Burgess Bowman. Now, Bob Prince, the old announcer for the Pirates, said that Smokey Burgess could hit while he was still in bed. Now, Smokey credits himself for winning the 1960 World Series for the Pirates because they replaced him with Hal Smith, and Hal Smith hit a home run. And that allowed for Bill Mazeroski's home run to win the game. So he used to joke around and say he won that 1960 World Series for the Pirates. Speaking of the Pirates, I have a 1951 Pete Riser. I have a Jack Swinski autograph rookie card. I think I paid $5 for this. <laughs> I mean, if it's not the top prospect, no one wants them. No one. Especially if it's not a 10. I got this Otani refractor. It's fantastic. And I got this Otani refractor. A lot of color there. A lot of color. I could probably get more color if I go spray some stuff on here and shine it up. Steph! Do we have Windex? I'll have to go to the store. All right. Um, I got... Wambi uh, sticker, rookie sticker. And I guess in the sticker set, 
I don't know the whole deal with this. They had cards. And I think they have one in the away uniform, one in a home uniform, if I'm not mistaken. I guess I'll have to go look for the other one. I believe. That's the only one I've ever seen. If any of you know, or selling one, let me know. All right, what else do I have? Got a, uh, got a whole bunch of Caitlin Clarks. Every time she breaks a record, Tops Now comes out with a card. And I went down the rabbit hole of buying them, so now I feel obligated. I, I, there isn't another one I just bought. So I have a whole stack of these now. And uh, they included this. This is uh, different. This is uh, the same pose here, uh, but on this card. I think they came as a set. I think you got both. I think. I know sometimes Tops Now will just uh, randomly include. So I, I don't know if this was a random insert or if it came with both of them. I remember seeing both of the pictures, but I didn't pay that much attention to the details, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right. I got these uh, cool tobacco cards. And these are uh, they're called Champion on the back. They're from the 1930s from overseas. And they're various uh, sports stars. So here's a Boxer Primo. A really cool looking card. These are all cool. Another boxer. I love these cards. Here's a race car driver. We got a soccer player. Wait. Is that soccer or rugby? That ball's round. That's soccer. Is he a goalie? Why is he holding it? And a uh, cricket player. I won these for $4. All of them. I mean, who says you have to spend a lot of money to have some fun? $4. All right. <laughs> I, I pulled out just a, uh, a few random cards. I always like to show random cards. And since I've been doing so much cleaning and reholdering and everything, I've been, you know, I go through my cards and I just pick random things out. So one I wanted to show you is an extra special. It's from a rare set. And that's the uh, sh th the Tharps ice cream set. And it's George Sisler. Now the ice cream, um, and they vary on the back. So they had Harrington's, Yingling, and Tharps. Tharps is the most rare, but they're all scarce. And they also had other issues that, that look like this. Uh, the uh, York Carmel um, looks similar. The uh, W502s, which were a game. And uh, got this KDK Manny Sanguian. I have the whole set, but I had this one hanging up, and I'm, I'm going to put it with my set now, so took it down. And, of course, I have the one from... Roberto Clemente's personal collection that I thought were pretty scarce, but then all of a sudden uh, everybody and their brother has one. I know Theo got one. Um, uh, Lou Rock got one while I was with him at, at the National two years ago. I think there's 40 or 50 some out there from his personal collection, but I'm, I'm thrilled to have my copy. And I just thought I'd share this Bell brand. I got this at uh, the National last year. Uh, it's Johnny Padre's Bell Brand. Tough set.
I think the cards that are framed like that are kind of cool. Reminds me of a smaller version of the 1960 post serial box backs, the big cards, and a different color, of course. But the regional, you know, food product cards, they're all they're all pretty pretty tough. So I think that's all I have for you. Yeah, it is. All right. I think I'm going to go watch some more YouTube videos and uh, then check out the late games, maybe. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me.